Mr. Speaker, will you please call the House to order? The House will come to order. In the absence of clergy, let us pause for a moment of silence. Visitors are invited to join the members in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Mr. Morelli. Yes, thank you. Uh, good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, I want to uh, first encourage members to make their way quickly to the chambers. Uh, I think particularly as we approach the last few weeks of session, uh, people should not be reminded, but, uh, but let me remind them anyway that the sooner we get started on days like today, the sooner we can conclude our work for the day and move the session along. So I would encourage uh, members to... Uh, to get here. I'm now going to just in just a second give our schedule for the day and it will be another uh, busy day as it was yesterday. But before I do that, let me just take a moment to uh, share with members uh, some important things that have happened on this day, June 2nd, in the annals of time. And in fact, it was a uh, pretty important day over, over the years. For instance, Mr. Pre or Mr. Speaker, I uh, note that an 1886 president, Grover Cleveland, married Francis Folsom in the White House, becoming the only president of the United States to wed in the executive mansion. On this day in 1953, Queen Elizabeth II is coroneded at Westminster Abbey in London. As the current monarch of the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, this 63-year reign makes her the longest reigning regnant in world history. On this day in 1935, Babe Ruth announces his retirement at the age of 40. His Hall of Fame's career spanned 22 seasons, included 10 World Series appearances, and he hit 714 home runs. I think probably the Yankees today could use him. Um, and this uh, last item submitted by longtime listener Matt Tatone from Staten Island. Um, today is Donkey Kong's 35th birthday. Uh, gamers first got their chance to play the chubby Italian American, who would be me other than the fact that his name was Mario, uh, a working class hero and plumber. Uh, when the highly successful video game debuted in American arcades 35 years ago. The original game was flawed due to a programming glitch, making it impossible for Mario to save his girlfriend Pauline at level 22, I'm told. Nonetheless, it became and still remains uh, one of the most successful video game franchises in history. So, um, if it feels like we're playing a video game here today, I apologize, but uh, there will be a lot of moving pieces. Let me describe what our schedule will be. Uh, members have on their desks a main calendar, uh, as well as a debate list, which is on people's desks. After any introductions and housekeeping, we'll begin our work today on consent, beginning with calendars, calendar number 796, where we left off yesterday. We will otherwise work from the calendar and debate list. Um, members should be aware that the following committees will be meeting off the floor, and I would encourage people to pay special note to this. It is a long list, as is typically the case this time of year and this time of session members of the following committees. Codes, education, election law, higher education, judiciary, local governments, mental health, racing and wagering, real property taxation, social services, tourism, transportation, veterans affairs, and ways and means. Not necessarily in that order, as uh, I'm sure members uh, will know, and we will call our first committee momentarily. Um, majority members should note that there will be the need for a conference at some point during session today, maybe during session, maybe at the end of session, I'll continue to confer with my colleagues on the uh, other side of the aisle to see if they have any conference needs as well throughout the day. Uh, with that as a general outline, Mr. Speaker, before we go to introductions and housekeeping, I would like to ask members of the Mental Health Committee to uh, join uh, the chair, Ms. Gunther, in the Speaker's Conference Room, members of the Mental Health Committee. Mental Health Committee, Speaker's Conference Room, immediately. If you're in the sound of our voice, please come to chambers. Committee members, please go to the Speaker's Conference Room. Very good, sir. Now I note that there are some introductions and housekeeping. If we could take that up now, that would be appropriate. Mr. Tedesco, <clears throat> for the purposes of a introduction, <clears throat> 
Mr. Speaker and uh, my colleagues, over this past legislative session and in, in years past, we as uh, individual legislators in this conference have had the opportunity with great pride to bring in some outstanding uh, individuals and uh, teams and groups from uh, schools and school districts across this state. And in many instances, they uh, were champions, regional champions, league champions, sectional champions, state champions, even some national champions. But today, I am proud and honored from the 112th Assembly District to introduce to you, as they stand up and be recognized, probably the first world championship team we've ever brought to these, to these chambers. They are the Shenandoah Color Guard team, and they had an undefeated record. They're the 2016 Winter Guard International Color Guard World Champion gold medal winning varsity team. They competed in the Open Division in April at the University of Dayton Arena in Dayton, Ohio. In addition to the Shen Squad's overall title, the team's free-flowing routine won a fan favorite award at the championships. The Shen team comprised of 16 students in grades 9 through 12 completed, competed against 52 teams. The team's routine was titled Beauty Misunderstood and its total winning score for the competition was 96.85. To commemorate this amazing World Championship season, the New York State Assembly and Senate recently passed unanimously resolutions honoring the Shenandoah Color Guard team. Joining the team members and some of their families with us today is the team's talented director, Scott Snell. Scott, you can stand up. Who is clearly an ins inspirational instructor and Christine Mertes, choreographer. She's in the back. And with them are some, what I would have to term, clearly world champion parents. And they're in the back and maybe they could stand up because we have to give them a lot of credit also. Not only is this a great team, but they come from a fantastic school district in Shenandoah that I'm proud to represent. Mr. Speaker, I would ask you to welcome this outstanding championship team, afford them all the cordialities of this house and to give them the best congratulations we could have for an outstanding achievement by becoming real world champions. And they expect us to be a world champion assembly and assembly members, and uh, we're going to have to live up to their expectations. Certainly, on behalf of Mr. Tedesco, the speaker, and all the members, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor, congratulate you on your world champion uh, achievement to both the staff and the parents who support you. We congratulate you. Obviously, young people need the adult support that will back them up in any endeavor. We know that this victory that you have achieved is only the beginning of your career uh, as great citizens and members of the New York State family. Thank you so very much for joining us. Congratulations. Take this victory on with you throughout your life. Thank you. Mr. McDonald. Oh, no, Mr. Murray. Oh, oh, excuse me. Mr. Murray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to interrupt the proceedings for the purposes of an introduction. With me today is a uh, very good friend of mine and a fellow elected official, uh, Brookhaven Town Councilman Michael Ligurcio. Uh, Mike is up here, and he's uh, discussing different things, legislation and things and ways that we can make things better for the residents of Brookhaven and the residents of his council district. But uh, Mike is not only here as a uh, town councilman, but he's here as a friend and a very, very busy friend, Mike is, because not only is he a Brookhaven town councilman, he's also a small business owner. He owns an insurance agency in Middle Island. He is also just recently, when he became the town councilman, resigned his seat on the Longwood School District Board, where he was on the board for 12 years, four as president, three as vice president, and he jokingly tells me that it's, it's easier on the town council, he gets yelled at less than when he was on the school board. Uh, I know many people can relate to that, but Mike is also a volunteer firefighter with the Ridge Fire Department as well. He has his son, Devin, who is currently in Toro Law School. Devin wants to actually pursue a career in politics, so we were hoping he could make the trip up here. 
and uh, as, as my colleague here says, we'll try to talk him out of it. Uh, his daughter Jessica is the, at the University of West Florida, um, and she's very proud of uh, both his son and his daughter and their accomplishments there. But uh, if you could, I'd like you to please uh, welcome Councilman Ligurcio and give him the, uh, all of the accolades he deserves. Thank, Thank you. you. Certainly, on behalf of Mr. Murray, the Speaker, and all the member, members, Councilman, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. This is the People's House. We salute you on a, an extraordinary both business career and obviously a volunteer in your community and a public servant. A uh, lot of work that you do, my friend. Thank you so very much for it. I'm sure your community is better off that you've give, made those choices. Thank you. Mr. Kusick. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you for allowing me to uh, interrupt the proceedings for the purpose of an introduction. Uh, as you know, Mr. Speaker, yesterday uh, we uh, had a vote on a proclamation, a resolution here in this House proclaiming yesterday uh, National Running Day in the state of New York. Uh, yesterday marked uh, Global Running Day uh, throughout the world, and there were many running events to encourage people uh, to run. Uh, some of my colleagues, uh, they, they, they uh, wish they could be there, but they had other things that were taking up their time uh, yesterday to join us. But we had a nice run here at the Capitol, uh, and uh, many of the local runners came out, and some of my colleagues were able to break away for a little, little run in between votes. Uh, so it was very enjoyable, but it was... Uh, it was a great time because we had many partners involved. Uh, the uh, local Albany running clubs at uh, Fleet Feet uh, Albany uh, were uh, participants. But we also had a partner this year in Global Running Day, New York Road Runners Club. And today we are joined uh, by uh, Mr. Michael Schnall from the New York Road Runners Club. Uh, the Road Runners are, are based in, in New York City. Uh, they run many programs uh, throughout the state and throughout the, 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 the nation to encourage running on all levels uh, for young people, for, uh, for adults, uh, to get people up and running and to live a healthy lifestyle. So, Mr. Speaker, I would ask that if you could welcome Mr. Schnall, a representative from the New York Road Runners Club uh, here at the House, and uh, grant him the cordialities of the House. Certainly. Uh, on behalf of Mr. Kusick, Mr. Speaker and all the members, Michael, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. Hope that you have had a successful couple of days here in Albany advancing the cause of running. That is good for all of us. Some of us run in different ways, um, as I'm sure you imagine, but uh, all of us need to maintain some sense of healthy stability in our lifestyles, and I know that your group advances that. Thank you so very much. Continue the good work. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to interrupt the proceedings for the purpose of introduction. It gives me a great pleasure today to introduce uh, a young lady who's a friend of mine, uh, who is a leader in the Minority and Women Business Enterprise, and who's also from Harlem uh, to be here in our chamber, Ms. Uh, Julie Harris. Ms. Julie Harris is the Vice President of McKissick & McKissick and which is a family-owned business for more than 100 years. McKissick & McKissick is the oldest woman and minority-owned professional design and construction firm in the United States. Julie provides operational oversight and leadership for program management and of disaster recovery resilience projects. She is also a subject matter expert on HUD and FEMA disaster policy and programming related issues and brings more than nine executive level years of experience managing and implementing long-term community recovery programs. Furthermore, Julie also has um, nine years of leadership in diversity uh, and inclusion practices and diversity workforce development. She has served as a manager for four years at En-ROADS, an organization that focuses on developing and placing talented underserved youths in business and industries, thus preparing them for corporate and community leadership roles. In addition, for five years, Julie has served as a program director for Louisiana State University's Engineering 
Diversity Program and the Ronald McNair Scholars Program. A former world-class athlete, Olympian, Julie was an All-American for the National Championship of Louisiana State University Lady Tiger Track and Field Team and also served as a coach for the 1996 Belize Olympic Team and the 1999 World Indoor Track and Field Championships for Team USA. Julie has received her bachelor degree from LSU and holds a master's degree in education from Syracuse University. She currently serves on the board of directors for the Women Builders Council. Uh, Mr. Speaker, please extend your warmest cordiality to Ms. Julie Harris. Ms. Robinson on the same subject. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me the opportunity to introduce the proceeding. Um, I, I too would like to acknowledge this extraordinary woman, Julie Harris, um, who has had a distinguished career. Uh, my colleague has certainly already um, indicated all of the fine things that um, she has done. But in addition to that, um, I'm very proud to acknowledge her as being my goddaughter. Uh, and so I want to welcome her here and wish her well uh, because she has um, been able to provide us with some extraordinary services in terms of um, minority and women-owned business opportunities and information. So please uh, welcome and extend to her the courtesies of this house. Thank Certainly. you. Mr. Barron on the same subject. I also want to rise to congratulate Julie. I remember when we were organizing around the African burial ground in Manhattan and seeking a design for that. You gave us the best design, but the male-dominated field gave it to someone else, and now we have a monstrosity down there that doesn't look nearly as good as what you were going to give us. So I want to applaud you, continue your work. We're very proud of you, and all of us to continue to support you strongly. Congratulations. Certainly, on behalf of Ms. Bichat, Ms. Robinson, Mr. Barron, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. We are, uh, really are in awe of the uh, resume that was read about you. You have accomplished so much and seemingly at such a young age. We look for greater things to come as time will give you that opportunity. Thank you so very much. You're always welcome here. A quorum being present, the clerk will read the Journal of Wednesday, June 1st. Mr. Morelli. Mr. Speaker, I move to dispense of the further reading of the Journal of Wednesday, June 1st, at the same stand approved. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Morelli. And what I don't take as a particularly auspicious sign for the day, Mr. Speaker, uh, because we don't have a sufficient number of members of the Mental Health Committee, we're going to postpone that and instead ask members of the Veterans Committee. We'll try something different here. Uh, in the Speaker's conference room, uh, I believe Mr. Dendecker is prepared for a committee on veterans in the Speaker's conference room. Mental health postponed, veterans in the Speaker's conference room. Members, please proceed. Members. At the sound of our voice, we are trying to make this a day that will end before night. Please come to the chamber so that we can begin the process. Thank you. Mr. Morelli. Yes, sir. If we could now go to page three of the main calendar, we're going to begin with rules, uh, Assembly Resolution 1433. I'm sorry, Assembly Resolution 1433 on page three by Mr. Simberwitz. Clerk will read. Resolution number 1433, Committee on Rules, Legislative Resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim June 5, 2016 as Cancer Survivors Day in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1434, Committee on Rules, Legislative Resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim June 20th through the 26th, 2016, as Pollinator Awareness Week in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. 
Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1435, Committee on Rules. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim Wednesday, September 28, 2016, Women's Health and Fitness Day in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1436, Committee on Rules. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim October 6, 2016 as German American Day in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1437, Committee on Rules. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim October 6, 2016 as Organ Donor Enrollment Day in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1438, Committee on Rules. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim October 2016 as Dyslexia Awareness Month in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Mr. Yes. Morelli. Yes, thank you, sir. If we could uh, now to turn turn to page 65 in the main calendar or the main uh, main calendar and take up uh, calendar number 796 by Mr. Scoopus. Clerk will read. Assembly 8549, calendar 796, Mr. Scoopus, an act to amend the highway law. On a motion by Mr. Scoopis, the Senate bill is before the House. The Senate bill is advanced. Read the last section. This act shall take effect immediately. Clerk will record the vote. Mr. Morelli. Yes, sir. Thank you. This is our first vote of the day. And uh, for the handful of members in the chambers, I'd like to encourage them to vote. And for the number of members who are not in the chambers, I'd really like to encourage them to come to the chambers so we can uh, move this morning's activities along. Thank you, Mr. Morelli. First vote of the day, members.